everyone. It's Annette Green. Welcome back. Uh, I am here today with my planner. In particular, I'm working in my nature planner, which I haven't worked in in quite some time. Here's a little flip back of a few pages. Um, so I was thinking about the new like page protectors that Elizabeth Craft Designs has come out for uh, with their for their planners. Now they have developed them so that they fit the full size planner, but not yet the Sidekick size planner. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about at all, these are the new Planner Essentials photo pocket pages, and you get a whole bunch in here. There are four different configurations and, uh, let's see, three of each style. So you have quite a lot to work with. However, like I said, they go for the larger planner. So today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use some of these and adapt them to work in your Sidekick planner. The first thing you might want to do is make yourself a little template. Uh, I just picked some sturdy cardstock and I follow the holes that are already in a page and punch them and it's like just my little guide here. Okay, so you'll need that. Um, there's also a die. I forget which one it is. Uh, I want to guess it's Planner Essentials 5, but I'm not sure. Don't hold me to it. But it does have a little strip only, a die strip where you can cut anything uh, with the six holes that go into the Sidekick Planner. So anyway, you'll need that and you will need a um, X-Acto blade, some kind of craft knife, and what else? A ruler and some paper and some photos. <laughs> okay, so anyway, here I am. This is my last entry. This was last summer, and I just did a few pictures of some nature things from last summer, so I thought I would do a little bit more summer photos. Uh, since it's winter time now and we're all cold and you know, hoping for spring. Uh, how about we'll just go right to summer. So this is the back of my page that I had been working on. I did a video on this one. Um, the Elizabeth Craft Designs Facebook page. I did a Facebook Live on doing using your dyes to create stencils and do watercolor and all that good stuff. Uh, I will put the link to that one below if you're interested. I did these pages here in that fashion. Um, but, so we're working on the back of this one, which is just white paper, and I have already die cut from Sidekick Essentials 3, that's this one here, that has the little tab on the side, and it has a little arrow I'm going to use, and it has this little banner thing. Um, so I'm going to attach this right onto here, and I'm going to be using the Graphic 45 new Let It Be paper because oh, I love it and it, it just is very summery and pretty with lots of sunflowers and bees. So I'm going to work some of that into here as well. Now right away you might see my little hole reinforcers. Can you see those nice and close? Um, I did not use any hole reinforcer die. This is just a little tip of something that I did. Uh, in one of, In the paper there's a row of these sunflower borders, okay? Kind of art deco-y looking to me anyway. And I used, first I used my crocodile to punch the hole right in the center of the flower. And then I used just a half inch circle punch to punch the rest of the flower to make my own hole reinforcer. So that way you can be really precise where you do it and make your own. So that is exactly what I have done here. Okay, so I just need to adhere this onto here before we move on to the page protector thing. All right, so let's go ahead and get this page done. It's gonna be very simple. I have fussy cut this humongous Hello Sunshine thingy from one of the papers, which I thought was perfect for summer. And I'm just gonna get this, oh, well, here we go. I'm just going to get this onto my page. I have this great photo. I have to look this up. I think this is a couple of chanterelle mushrooms, but there's a there was a little snail like hiding. This one's kind of hovering over this other mushroom and there's a little snail in there. So I thought that was pretty cool. We 
we're on a hike in the early summertime. <laughs> I'm wearing a ball hat and I just uh, I just bumped the camera with my head. Sorry. Okay, so I feel like the colors of that chanterelle mushroom, if that's what that is, works beautifully with that paper. And, and this is really all I was going to put on this page. It's just that simple. It took no time at all. So let's get that in the planner and let's talk about those page protectors. All right, so I took the one style that is the most narrow. So if we look at the packaging again, you see how these are all the same. And then there's this skinny guy. This is the one I'm going to use today. Uh, now, that doesn't mean I won't find other ways to use these other guys. But um, today I just want to show you. Oh, I've already cut up two of them. Okay. I'm going to show you two different things you can do with them to get them to work in your sidekick. Okay, so what I did with this one, this is what it looks like, the whole thing. Okay, and I'm going to grab a mat to cut on because it's a lot easier to see on a black mat than on this glass mat. All right, and this is what I did do to it. Okay, so you can see right away it's a lot smaller. Can you see? <laughs> There's the top. There's the bottom. So this is quite a bit shorter. But all six, one, two, three, four, five, six holes are there. So as we know, the holes in a full-size planner are not in the same position as the Sidekick planner. However, the three holes, the three on each planner are the same. It's just not all six line up. Does that make sense? Okay. So if I put this in my full size planner, I wouldn't have to do anything, but to get it to work on, on how close together these three and three are together, you have to kind of play around a little bit. So the first thing that I wanted to do is use my little template and get this to the right size. All right, now I know from top to bottom, this is the right size of the page. So that means you've got to first cut off the top of your page protector, one half of an inch, okay? And then off the bottom, you're gonna cut off quite a lot, actually. Let's line these up. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see that down here. Here is the bottom of my page protector, like right there where I cut it. So I cut off an inch and one quarter off the bottom. So a half inch off the top and one and a quarter off the bottom. Easy enough to do. You just lay your page protector down on your surface and get a good old ruler and line it up at the half inch and just slice that off. That part's no problem uh, because this is open already anyway. Now the bottom is a pocket, of course, a sealed pocket. So when you cut off one and a quarter off of here, now you have an open hole in the bottom. So what do you do about that? There's a number of things you can do. Uh, I took mine to the sewing machine. Let me pull these out. I popped these in here to see how they looked. I took mine over to the sewing machine and just stitched the opening closed. Very, very close to the edge, nice small stitch, and it, it works beautifully. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can use some washi tape and put half of it on this side and fold it around to, to the other side. And now you've sealed off the bottom. You could do that with cardstock or paper as well instead of washi tape. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can do. So that was super duper easy to just stitch across the bottom. I got my sewing machine right here in the craft room. So that's no big deal for me. Okay, and then inside now I have these two wonderful pockets. And I'll give you the measures of the papers here. Real quick, before I tell you that, I just wanted to uh, remind you to use your template and you have to punch that last hole. Uh, I believe we add one right here is what it actually is because there is one down here already. So I just lay my template on there, line up all the holes that are there already, and then find the one that I need to punch. And I use, instead of the crocodile, um, the eyelet setter crocodile, because the largest hole on that is a little bit small, 
compared to the holes that are in the page protector, I use my We Are Memory Keepers, just regular industrial hole punch. Um, you open the little flap. Where's the little flap? Open the little flap and then stick it in there and you can look right through to line up and see where you're punching. And that hole is just a little bit larger. I'm going to use this black mat for both sides, but then the paper inside will be different on each side. So the black mat for this top pocket equals three and one eighth by three and one half. So the yellow paper, this is also from that graphic 45 paper, is three inches by three and three eighths inches. So it's just an eighth of an inch smaller. This one is the three and an eighth, of course, because that's what this one was. And the height of this bottom one is two and three quarters. So you just need to cut this paper the one eighth inch smaller. So three inches by two and five eighths. Easy peasy, okay? So that's ready to go. I've got my photos over here. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I do, you know, all my photos, I get them all measured out what I need, and then I print them all at once on an eight and a half by 11 sheet. So those are ready to go. I can pop those in here and I will do something to the back. But let's skip ahead to maybe another idea with the page protectors. Uh, again, using that skinny one, but this time we're going to cut it into two separate ones that will slightly overlap. So I've already done that, and I've labeled the, see the B for bottom and T for top up there? So if I put these into my book right now, I would put the T in first, and the holes line up. I'll tell you we're going to trim these two, but just to kind of show you what I want to do. So it looks a little funny now because it's hanging off the top and the bottom. But this is the little bit of overlap that I like. Okay, so now I will have two independent little page protectors here. All right, so how did I do that? I took the page protector that started like this and I cut just below that middle dotted line there. Okay, so you have your little pocket here, and this dotted line is the seal to make this a closed pocket. So I cut just below it. All right, so that is my, yes, this is the bottom, okay? So the bottom part is sealed. I didn't touch that yet. And there is the, gosh, it's so hard to show you this. Let me find something put this on to show you. Can you see that better? Not much. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. I've cut them right apart. Simple as that. Okay, but it's still too long. So what we're going to do here is trim off a half of an inch from this top one and a half of an inch from the bottom one. Okay, nice and straight. Hold it firm. Okay, so now we have this little pocket. And I'm going to keep that T with it, just so I don't get confused. I really shouldn't get confused because once I cut this off, this will be the bottom and it will be an open pocket again that we're going to have to determine what are we going to do. Are we going to stitch it again? Are we going to fold something over? Maybe I'll do something a little different to this one. Okay, so that's the bottom. So let's get our planner back over here and take a look. So if T goes up here, now it lines up with this previous page, and B goes down here, it pretty much lines up. Yep, pretty good. Okay, so that's something else that you can do. We just have to close that down. Something I didn't point out to you before on this particular page is when I punched my holes, uh, this hole was one that was already in the page protector. So if that bothers you, I mean it's clear, you hardly see it, but it might bother you to have a hole there with nothing happening. So you can either, you know, take a border strip and cover that up, or you can cut it off like I'm going to do. I'm going to cut a little bit of a an arc cut there, and since I did it there, I'm going to do it here. 
And you saw I just eyeballed it. I'm not going to fuss about it. So there's that. I didn't want to forget to mention that. Going back to my first one that we cut and sewed across the bottom, I have attached my photo and then I also attached a photo to the back. So it's just the one black mat and stuff on both sides. So you're not like doubling up everything inside of here. Um, I decided not to do any kind of paper mat like I did on this side with the yellow paper. Um, just to reduce the bulk a little bit. Plus I thought this photo just stood um, beautifully all on its own on the black mat. So I'm going to pop this in here. For my second photo down here, I have this really funky flower. And I use this wonderful app. I'm not sure which way this goes now. Um, but before I put this in the pocket, I want to have something on this side. And I've realized, you know, I don't have any journaling or any kind of labeling of anything yet. So I am going to use this little journaling card. This is an older one from, I don't know which collection, but I don't have the let it be journaling cards yet. So that's why I'm using this one. So I just need to cut this down. So the width is fine, but the height needs to be like two and a half. So I'm going to cut that down. So I'll get that on there and I'll put that in that pocket. Okay, we've got that in there ready to go. This is how we're looking so far. And now we want to work on these little guys. So I've got my photos already selected. I just need to decide how I'm going to close up the bottom of this one and how that's going to work with my photo. So we know that's the top one. Let's start with the bottom one instead. So I'm going to pick a photo that I know won't be interrupted at the bottom if I did like a fold over or washi or some kind of closure to the bottom of that one. So for the top one, we're going to have this lovely photo here. So I'm going to put a photo mat behind that. And then this wonderful, beautiful, big, gigantic moth is going to go in here. Okay, here's one of those instances where you've got two photos that are very, very different in their values and their colors and all that. So how do you make that tie together? on one page uh, and that is the dominant color here can be the photo mat for this guy right so all this bright green I picked a bright green mat for this guy and then this one has that it's that beauty berry bush so I matched the beauty berries with a compatible cardstock and now if these are on the same page together you can see how they do kind of work still and I might even do a little embellishment on here or maybe even it's that fold over that closes up the bottom that has that same kind of purpley pink in it to really bring it all together. Got some things prepped and ready here. Uh, I went ahead and put photo mats on my other two photos here. There's a lot of blue in the background so I picked the same kind of blue for the mat and these are going to go on the back of these so we do have these guys like you saw and this one goes with the bottom so this one goes with the top and I think I want my ducks to be on the top so I'm just going to put these in So that's cute. Uh, this goes here. And then we got this guy we need to put on the back of this guy. Okay. And, and honestly, I could leave it like this because I don't think it's going anywhere. It's so, it's nice and snug, but you know, just in case. All right, just for kicks, we're going to try a little washi on the bottom of this one, just so you can see what that would be like. I'm trying to tie in the colors a little bit with the beauty berries on that photo above. So I'm going to just take some of this. I'm going to do like half hanging off. Not sure if we'll like this or not. Well, it's going to be up to 
each one of you to see if this is something that you like. But this is how it would look. It's not bad. It's kind of cute. And it does kind of pull it together. I don't know. What do you guys think? It's kind of fun. Um, in the end, after doing it, I will tell you that I decided I don't want to put that on there. But I just wanted to show you that you have options. So you may have seen this while I was doing it, but I did go ahead and stitch the bottom of this one. And I'm just going to leave that be. All right, now I'm going to take a few minutes to maybe add some embellishment and dress this up a little bit more, tie things in a little bit better, and then I'll be back to show you what I've done. Alrighty, so I have dressed everything up. As you can see, I did add that little arrow to point out the snail. Uh, I die cut it out of the pink cardstock, but then backed it with some of the black there. So we can put that in here. That's done and ready. I added some hole reinforcers on this particular page and I labeled my little flower here. I'm still waiting for an answer on this one and I'll explain what I mean by that. But the little flowers are um, hole reinforcers from the Reinforcement Variety Pack. That's number one of two sets. And I had to do them on both sides because they were like a craft color on the back. So if it was just a solid cardstock on both sides, I wouldn't have to do both sides. But that is how that looks. And the back side, I did a little journaling here and I labeled this uh, flower set here. So that looks pretty when you look through the page. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we've got our beauty berries. We'll put in next and our big moth which I labeled there and I'm not going to put any labeling on this side just because I think you know a sunset speaks for itself and a couple of ducks <laughs> and then I just for fun put that last page in there even though I'm not going to decorate it yet uh, today but I have it ready because it kind of ties in with the blue that's going on over here so um, as you can see uh, these are a little bit loose, so if that drives you completely crazy, it doesn't bother me. You can always clip it so it stays together when you're flipping through your book, and then when you're ready to look at this page, you can unclip it, you know, find fun little clips or coordinating colored paper clips. That is an option, uh, but that that's pretty much it. These are very simple pages because it's just about nature. It's not about making a big beautiful spread with all kinds of embellishment. It's really just to document things that I see throughout the season here. And real quick, just in case you were interested in doing something like this and you don't necessarily know the names of everything you're seeing, there are wonderful apps out there. I use iNaturalist and you can upload a photo and do a little bit of a search and if other people have found it as well in your area they can help you identify it. So that's why I say I'm waiting on identification for this one because this is a little tricky. It's a big giant leaf. There's really nothing else to go on. So that's just a little something to know. So you'll have to make sure you get some of these here Planner Essentials photo pocket pages and I will be working with these in my full size planner as well. Uh, but I thought it would be fun just to see how it would work in the sidekick. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it and trying something new. Hope you give it a try. And I will see you next time in the next video. Thanks again.